is enough for you, sufficient is to have a Lord that is your companion and a humble home, a humble home, and very simple provisions. Clothing, whatever it is that can cover you. And he said, being away from people, alone time, is the kingdom of thoughts. Meaning if you really want to dive into the world of thoughts, try to have the alone time. Filling your life with too many people takes away that chance for you to really know exactly where the world of thought, what the world of thought can offer. She said, SubhanAllah, and, and you will find it that the, one of the delusions that Shaitan throws in our lives is that the more people you know, the better off you are. It's the other way around. Less people you know, better off you are. Because every person that you sign up for, to know is a, an obligation before Allah that you have to be very responsible for. Every person you need to know is a responsibility before Allah on a day of judgment. Because you will be questioned whether you fulfilled the right of that person you got to know. This is why they say the world of thoughts can only flourish if you are by yourself. Not when you your life is filled with you look at the list of people you know, tons of them. Because each one of them has, uh, or rather you have an obligation towards each and every one of them. And he says that the healing, you know, the pharmacy usually physically when you're sick, you seek medicine in the pharmacy. But the real pharmacy of the heart is in the dhikr of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah bi dhikri lahi tatma'in al-khulu. The real medicine is actually in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you were to wake up in the morning and you are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a sign of it is the first thing that dominates your thought is Standing before Allah Ta'ala in the Salah with the dhikr, dua, recitation of the Quran, you come into the Masjid for Fajr. These are signs of you fulfilling that relationship or rather f making, caring for the relationship you have between you and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. If you wake up in the morning and you're obedient to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala and you have contentment in your heart, with what Allah Ta'ala provided you with. Opposite of it is, someone who wakes up thirsty for worldly possessions. I don't have this one, I don't have the other one. And you, the worry and the consumption of your heart and mind is in the, the worldly possessions that you don't have. It just adds more worries and stress. Uh, instead of being content with what Allah Ta'ala provided you with, that is a sign of richness. You are the richest person if you are content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided you with. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided you with safety and security for you and your loved ones, that is a crown that doesn't have a price. No price tag could ever be put on the safety and the security of your home of yourselves. To think about the opposite of it is to think about those who live in a war zone. If you were to ask them for the most beautiful treasure that you could ever ask for, they will say, just safety. We don't want any, just peace. We don't want anything from the worldly possessions. None of it. You can just, we can do without it. 
but peace comes first. That safety and security, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided us with. With being content with what Allah ta'ala gave you, obedient to Allah, grateful for the safety, you are the richest person, person alive for that moment. You are the, the richest person. And the worries that people carry around, the, around with them in, about the worldly gains, job, money, houses, and, and all of it, Wallahi, that whole worry is not worth one second of your thoughts. Not one second, simply because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create you and I to be distressed about the worldly provisions. Why? He created you and I with our provisions assigned before even we came out to this world. It's not worth spending one second of thoughts about the worries or rather the material worries. Instead, that second needs to be spent in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of some sort. Dhikr, Quran, standing before Allah in salah, enjoying good, forbidding evil. There's so many things to prepare and get ready for, for our abode in an uh, Athar. Worrying about a world that vanishes, comes to an end so quickly, is not worth it. Rather, worry about the permanent life, the everlasting life, hayat al the hereafter. That's the little worry that we should carry with us all the time. If we lose sight of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for the believers in the Jannah, then we lost a motivator. The motivation Allah Ta'ala put in Al-Qur'an is what He had, gardens, and there which water and rivers are flowing. Jannah, tajri min tahtiya al-anha. This is what Allah Subh'ana Wa Ta'ala put as incentive, as motivations for us to look forward to. If we worry it only comes as a result of us losing sight also of Allah being our master, our provider, our manager of all of our affairs. That's, that's the time where we, we have accumulation of tons of worries. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who spared you and I from the worries and from the sadness. Why? He's the one who is taking care of all of our affairs. All the worries can go away with one sajda. One sajda. All the worries can go away with one sajda. And all of the distress can also be, and the, the hardship can be relieved by one dua. One dua. And joy can come over with one smile in the face of your brother. One smile. The pattern with the people, he, he goes on to say, the pattern with the people is that when Allah Ta'ala bestows upon us gifts after gifts, we take those gifts for granted. The bounties of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala when they are continuous with us, we take them for granted. And we don't, we were not grateful uh, for them anymore. Take the health, for instance. Take family. Take wealth. Take la ilaha illallah as a gift from Allah Ta'ala to us. The fact that Allah Ta'ala keep that bounty consistent with us makes us forget about being grateful for it. Subhanallah. Gratefulness and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be implemented when we sit after the prayer. No rush. After the prayer, you sit and do the dhikr of Allah, the istighfar. The most 
beautiful opportunity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put for us after every prayer five times a day to take advantage of. If we lose on that, we lose on tremendous invitation from Allah Ta'ala for our sins to be forgiven. Just to sit after the prayer and do the dhikr, the istighfar, ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala for your affairs. Recite Ayat Al-Kursi as the Prophet Sallallahu gave you and I glad tidings when he said that if you were to recite Ayat Al-Kursi after every prayer, there is nothing that prevent you from entering the Jannah except dying. Very, very simple gifts. And it promises from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, فَإِذَا فَرَقْتَ فَمُنْصَرْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرَقْتَ after the prayer in of itself, which is the most beautiful meeting a person could ever have, is that meeting you have through a salah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're done with that meeting, sit right after it and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for more of his gifts, worldly and also of the hereafter. Those are steps towards Allah and towards a jannah end of his advice to his students. Let's close panel with that to make us amongst those who benefit from the advice wherever it comes from.